Monster Society. For President Jimmy Carter, the 1980 election may have been lost as early as Sunday, November 4th, 1979, when he and my next guest learned that Iranian militants had taken over the U.S. Embassy in Tehran. My guest was chief advisor to President Carter throughout the turbulent days that followed, and now he has written his memoirs, Crisis, the Last Year of the Carter Presidency. Hamilton Jordan. I grew up with a lot of Irish kids named Jordan, but you spell it Jordan. Yeah. You say Jordan, and right. I say Jordan. Right. Now, why is it okay. pronounced? Let's get that out of the way because that All right, this is a, bothers me. Not the first time I've been asked. I'm that. certain of that. Uh, the last you, 20 okay. minutes it has been. <laughs> how do you how do you pronounce W O R D? Word. J O R D. Jord. Yeah. You yeah, are. See? You had to get technical. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> had to trick you. Uh, and it's peculiar, not, not, not just to the south, to the deep south. In North Georgia, they pronounce my name Jordan. But uh, when I you get down to the net line, uh, it's, Jordan. it's Jordan. The key Jordan. word there that you just said was peculiar. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Sully. <laughs> <laughs> now you say in here to grant the Shah medical sanctuary was not the result of pressure by Kissinger and Rockefeller. Would you explain that to me, please? Well, the conventional wisdom is that, that Henry Kissinger and David Rockefeller pressured our government and the president into granting the Shah uh, entry to the United States. That was not true. If anything, President Carter resented their pressures on us to admit the Shah. The president admitted the, the Shah for a single and simple reason. He was dying of cancer in Mexico. Mm -hmm. We were told that he needed medical treatment only available in the United States. Was he that true? Uh, it's hard for me to believe. In, ret in retrospect, I'm not sure. We, we, we may have been misled. But ultimately, it was a matter of principle. But uh, ironically, uh, I remember that meeting that, uh, that Friday morning in the cabinet room. All of the president's advisors thought that the Shah should be allowed in. The it, president... It was unanimous? No, except for the president. He was the single holdout. Finally, mm. he said, okay, well, I suppose we'll have to let him in, but what are you guys going to suggest we do if they overrun our embassy and take our people hostage? He called that shot. Unfortunately, uh, he w it was a very prophetic wow. statement. Indeed. Two weeks later, uh, the embassy was overrun. Mm. Now, you confirmed two secret meetings with uh, Khomeini its representative, and uh, the Iranians said that the uh, hostage crisis could be immediately solved if the White House would order the CIA to kill the Shah. That's correct. What happened at the first meeting I had with uh, Sadek Gosudeh, who was a foreign minister, we met secretly in Paris uh, early in the crisis. I was pushing him to, uh, to quickly and peacefully resolve the crisis by letting our people go. And he said, well, there's an easy way to do that. And I said, how? And he said, uh, kill the Shah. And I said, uh, you must be kidding. He said, no. All I want the CIA to do is to do the same thing to the Shah that they've done to thousands of Iranians over the years. That, that anecdote, I think, in a, in, a, in a word explains the enormous differences between our two countries uh, and our failure to understand each other's countries and cultures. Mm. You also said that uh, that Mr. Kennedy refused to campaign for uh, Mr. Carter's re-election unless uh, Mr. Carter agreed to pay off Mr. Kennedy's campaign debt. Is that true? Yes, <laughs> oh, that's true. My, my, my. That's true. What? Uh, would you like a little color? Would you like to Ooh. hear it? Uh, what are we talking about? What was that campaign? Well, debt? what happened was after. It's not unusual for for the loser to want a little help uh, from the winner in terms of paying off the campaign debt. What was unusual was that when I went to see Steve Smith, who was Senator Kennedy's yes. brother-in-law, uh, to paraphrase our con and summarize our conversation, he said basically that Senator Kennedy could only afford to campaign for the ticket if we helped him with his campaign debt. I reported that to President Carter, and President what Carter... What was his reaction? Well, he said that was, that was blackmail, which uh, was a, not a nice word to use, but... Uh, the best way to describe what they were doing to us. Hey, had that happened, how would Mr. Carter have done that? Had Where, what happened? Had he paid off Mr. Kennedy's debt? Where well, would that money have come from? Well, we, 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 we did, in fact, help Senator Kennedy raise uh, money for his campaign debt. As a matter of fact, I had to, to set an example for the, for the Carter people. I had to go to the bank and uh, 
borrow a thousand bucks to contribute to Ted Kennedy's campaign. And uh, I had to lean on a lot of my colleagues in the, in the White House uh, and in the campaign to gently do the same. Gently but firmly. Firmly, not even gently. <laughs> and uh, an enormous amount of resentment, uh, a bunch of people that didn't have a lot of money uh, helping a, a man who is very wealthy pay off his campaign debts. Yes, Sally. I, I met Hamilton when Mr. Carter was in the White House, and um, I walked in. I had his first appointment in the morning. It was 8.15 in the morning, and I was taken in the Oval Office first with mm -hmm. two of my friends, and we stood there waiting, and someone stepped inside the door and said, the President. And he walked in the room, and I looked at him, and I grabbed my face, and I went, oh, Mr. President, I never thought I'd be here. And he said, neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> More with Hamilton Jordan right after this. <laughs> Thank you.